Hello and welcome back to the shop. So today's video is going to be about restoring this mahogany tool chest, but if you stay till the end, you'll get a sneak peek on the next upcoming projects, which is going to be a very long length of project and it's going to be very involved and I think you guys will like it and it's totally machining. Now this tool chest here I got, it's, it's handmade, there's no maker's mark on it, it doesn't fit any sort of dimensions of an actual maker and so it's definitely handmade it's very very well done and it is solid mahogany i was actually able to pick it up for 20 bucks it was a little worse for wear but solid mahogany 20 bucks why not so this video is just going to go through how i basically stripped it and restored it to this finish here also the original box was missing its front cover and it obviously had one before because there are two pinholes in the bottom and a latch groove in the top so it had no way to store it so that's why it got lost so of course after I'm done with this entire box it was gonna call it a day you have that friend that kinda goads you and pokes you and says why don't you make the front cover why don't you make the front cover why don't you make the front cover so uh, I said no no I don't have the mahogany I can't get it so what did he do he shipped me a piece of mahogany so I had no excuses so I built the front panel after the fact matched the finish and gave it a storage system and closure system just like the Gerstner and I also had to these knobs here I actually had to nickel plate with the home nickel plate system because I couldn't only get them in brass for whatever reason so this is gonna go through how I did this now I started off after I already sanded everything I started videoing it I actually wasn't gonna make a video on it but then I decided to so we're going to come in on this being 100% sanded and stripped and cleaned. And I, for whatever reason, I didn't videotape it, but what I'm staining the box with is a water-based soluble dye powder. You take the powder, you mix it with water. I did a, a 50, half of the mix that it says on the bottle, which is good because then I got this other piece that I had to match and I was able to use the other half for that. So that's where we come in on our video. And this... So I hope you guys enjoy this video and uh, stick around to the end and you'll see a preview of an upcoming project. Okay, so we have our dye mixed. It's half of that bottle to the same amount of water as it says, basically just 50% diluted. This is the bottom of the box and we're going to apply it just like any stain and I just want to see what the color looks like first. That's actually not half bad. That's kind of what I'm going for. Alright, I'm going to let this dry a little bit and we'll see what it looks like. Um, see if I need to darken it up or do what I want or if I, this is the color I want to keep. A worst case scenario, uh, you know, I can always get a redder dye. This isn't too, too bad though. I don't know if the camera kind of picks it up. It's a nice little dark color. A little slight reddish tinge to it. I think that'll work pretty good. Well, we'll start to dry and we'll see. Okay, so we had a coat on here and I let it dry overnight and this is what it came out as, a slight reddish tint, which is what I was looking for. So what we're going to do now is we are going to cover the entire thing in some seal coat. So this is a, um, 
a sealer, what that's going to do is seal our wood so when we apply the grain filler, it is not going to make our wood any darker, but it will fill into the grain and make the grain darker. So I'm going to go through the whole thing, cover all, all areas with the sealer, and then we're going to let it dry, and then we'll be back after that. Okay, so we have a coat of the sealer on everything. It's been drying for about four or five hours throughout the day. What I'm going to do right now is just take a uh, synthetic uh, scotch right pad, just lightly go over all the surfaces, just to knock down any kind of high spots, and then we'll get ready to put the grain filler in them. Okay, so put a coat of the sanding sealer on there and let it dry. And then uh, that was a super light coat I, I did with the rag. And then I put another really light coat on there. So I got two little coats and we're looking like this. Now, if you can kind of put it in the light, you can see the pores in the wood there. We want to fill them. And I'm going to fill them using this product here. Uh, this is a mahogany brown, a light brown, you can kind of see the color here, and this is an ebony, really dark, 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 dark color. So I mixed them together to kind of get this kind of chocolate brown going here, and we're going to put that into the wood. Now what that's going to do is it's going to fill in the pores and also bring out the grain pattern. You can see it there. You can kind of see how it picks out the grain other than, say, this piece here, which has the same finish applied over the top, but does not have any grain filler. You can kind of see the difference there between this and, let's see if we can get this on top of here. You can see the difference there, okay? Now, the reason why we wanted to put the sanding sealer on there was so that we don't change the color of the base wood. We don't want it any darker. And the way I have applied this is to use, this is just a piece of plastic. All right, you can use a credit card or anything that you want. And the way I work this piece, what we're gonna be using is kind of just scooped up as I used to stir scooped up a bit and we're just plastering on against the grain and we're working it into the grain and we want it to fill into the grain and then we can kind of just scrape the excess off here and you can see that it's filling in the grain and I'll just take a rag and get out the extra here. I'm going to go through all that till it kind of looks like this. Let it haze over. And then we'll take off the excess with a gray scotch bright pad. That will take most of it off of the wood. Leave everything in the pores. Now you can also wipe it off with a cloth to get 90% of it off. If you wipe away from the grain it'll still say packed in. I've just had a little bit more luck with doing it this way and we have that sanding sealer over it so I'm not when I take it off I'm with the scotch bright pad I'm not going to actually eat into the finish I'm going to get that sanding sealer at worst I'm going to take a little bit of that sanding sealer off so this worked out pretty good for me it's probably not the exact correct way but it gave the look that I wanted so I'm going to go ahead and do all these pieces Okay, after about 10 minutes or so, you can see it's a little hazy. We're just going to take our uh, little scotch bright pad and very lightly take it off to the level of our finish. And you can see it's in the grain there. So what I'm going to do is do that to all of them. And we are going to wait probably... Uh, since I have to work this week anyway, uh, we're probably going to wait two days or so before we start putting our top coats of the varnish on it to make sure that this is 100% dry and set. Okay, so what we're using for that front panel is this piece of mahogany that was uh, generously given to me by a friend. 
and it is rough cut on these two outside edges. So what we're going to do right now is just cut one edge off. That's going to be our true side to take our measurement from. So let's go ahead and cut a slice off. Okay, we got a nice straight edge there now, and we'll use that up against the fence to make our measured cut. Okay, so we want about ten and a half. Um, I got to set for a little bit below that to make a nice gap so it can sit in. Okay, let's run it through with that setting. Okay, so this is now finished. It's pretty close to the original the color here. It's a pretty good match. What we need to do now, or what I need to do now, is I need to add a pole, which is in here, this pole right here. And I'm also going to do like Gerstner did. Now they, what they have is locking pins. So they have two pins, spring-loaded pins, that when this top is open, they pop up and allow this bottom panel to fall open. When you close this top latch, what happens is, is this pushes those pins down and they fit into holes that are in this top panel here, allowing it to lock this, this front panel without having another latch in it. So that's what we're going to do. Now I did order them from Gerstner. They are too short and I already knew that they were going to be too short, but all I have to do is basically extend the rod and just stretch the spring a little bit. I ordered them from Gerstner just because it was cheaper. They were 10 bucks a piece. They were cheaper to do that because it came with all the hardware, including, let me get them out of the package here, the two screws here. It's like a little threaded ferrule that goes, allows the pin to protrude through. All right, so there's one on each side, and then this one here, gets pressed into the top of this panel here and then that will be your basically locking latch. So uh, I need to measure out a spot for the pole and I need to hollow out a cavity for it to fit into for this to fit into. So that's what we're going to do right now. Okay so I have that marked in the center and I just need to hollow out an area for this to fit. And I'm just going to do it off camera. I'm going to work at it with a, a, a Dremel tool, a little diamond bit and a Dremel tool. I have some, uh, some gouges and some small chisels. And uh, we're just going to make carve out a zone for that to recess into. Okay, so I have the pole mounted. Now what I need to do is there are two existing ferrules on the bottom here. You can see them, right? one right here and one right here. And I need pins that will anchor this bottom in. So what I'm going to do right now is just let that float or drop it on the floor, whatever works. So I'm just going to kind of pop this in here and I'm going to take a transfer punch. I'm going to get that roughly where we want and I'm just going to go ahead and make a mark just with my hand by pushing it up. should be a mark that I can see. Yep, there's one right there and there's one right there. So what I can do is mark the middle of this board, drill a hole in there and put two pins that'll fit in here and that'll anchor the bottom piece in. So let me go find a pin that'll fit in here and I'll drill these holes. So I got the pin started in those holes, so all I'm going to do is just tap them in. About there. Same thing here. Now I rounded the edges a little bit. 
you can see there. So, let's see if this works. Okay, so I just made this little block and this is going to be my guide block for my drill. So, what we're going to do is just make sure we're in the right spot. Put this sucker over here and it's a nice tight fit on top of here. And do the same thing with the other side okay so I drilled through with that small drill bit I enlarged this hole to 930 seconds and these basically just get pressed in so the way I'm doing it right now because because it's easy for me is I'm just setting that in place taking one of my wood clamps here And it in place and then just using this to drive that little ferrule in, in nice and flat okay so I had to lengthen those pins I just made them out of brass I made whole new ones out of there and you can see the little bump over there that's what catches a screw instead of on the original ones they had that little kind of crimped area so now, what we do, we put these guys in here, and there it is. Actually, that's not the pin that goes in there. The pin that goes in that side is this one. So I can trim that however I like. I may take a little bit off of that. I'm probably just going to leave it where it is because when I put this up to it on the other side here let's see these are down flat I don't protrude out the bottom so I think I'm just gonna leave it out as it is rather than chasing my tail and then we just take these little ferrules here and they go right in on the top and just press in place okay so our pins and everything are in place our top caps are in place last step was to put a little brad right where the lid contacts that pin so now we have our under storage here. We can pull this sucker out. We can heal this in here. You can see we go all the way down there. And we go all the way down there. And we should be able to just move this. There we go. There you go. And it's done. So this right here is the long-term project this big old pile of gray cast iron so this is not a steam engine this is gonna be a gear hopper once it's done and I'll I'll when I do the videos I'll put links to all these castings and everything in that description of that video and we'll go over where they come from then now my idea behind this is not only is it gonna make a good video is that I'm sure a lot of you have seen the glut of 3D printed gears on eBay for the lathes, whether it be metric transposing gears, gears for the thread dial, or another gear in the gear train of these South Bend lathes, and others, Logan's, Craftsman's, all of them. Well, my idea with this is to start making some gearing out of metal for these lathes, and the reason why I chose a hobber to do it 
rather than using a gear cutter is a hauber is more consistent. It gives you a more consistent tooth profile, which means less gear noise, less high spots for in your mesh to be more consistent. This will do most of the gears that I need. I probably won't, it won't be able to do prime number gears. So the 127 tooth gear and the transposing gears, you'll have to do that by hand. And also, um, I think as large as it'll go is up to like four inch or so, but there's not very many gears in the gear train that are bigger than that on these lays. So this is what we're going to do. This casting set is commercially available. I'll tell you all about where it comes from in those videos. I did pay for this. This is not a freebie. I have zero affiliation with this company and it comes with a set of drawings. No real write up of how to put it together or how to actually build it. It's just a set of drawings, dimensions. This is what needs to be where. So I'm also hoping that this will be a set of instructions or I could write up a set of instructions to actually build one of these um, for anybody that wants one. But the casting quality is actually really, really, really good. There's um, not any inclusions. I caliper measured things here and there more than enough meat on it to take out any kind of imperfections we need to on any machine surfaces and my goal is to make this a whole series of building this and putting it together and kind of going piece by piece what e what each machine operation requires now obviously i can't give specific dimensions here and there just because this is theirs that the plans are theirs and that's how they're making their money so I know as I can't tell you, oh, well, this needs to be X amount dimensions from here, this and, and, and the other thing. I'm probably not going to be go, go that route, but it'll show work holding, what actually needs to be done. And if there are any errors in the plans or things that aren't clear, then I can clear them up from there. But that is the plan with this. So we'll be starting this in the next few weeks. So hope you, you guys will stick around and you can see this on its way to getting built.